So just behind me here is the famous Burrow Mump. Now, it was actually John Michel who made this famous back in the late 60s, early 70s, because when he was up on St. Michael's Church on the top of the tour, he noted that he could see Burrow Mump from the tour, and vice versa, you can see the tour from Burrow Mump. They both look very similar. Burrow Mump or Burrow Bridge Mump is like a smaller version of Glastonbury Tour, but they kind of align to each other along the May Day or Beltane Sunrise and the Samhain or um, Halloween Sunset. And so he realized from this that there could be a greater alignment between sites. And this is how he discovered the famous St. Michael line, which then became known, well known by uh, Paul Broadhurst and Hamish Miller in The Sun and the Serpent when they found the Michael and Mary energy line currents moving around them. And it's actually up here on the church on top here where the lines meet, actually right in the center of this particular chapel. Burrow Mump is an outcrop of Kwepa Marl, standing at quite a strategic point on the old course of the River Carey, and it joins the River Farrot, or Parrot, which we talked about already, and the River Tone. Some say it served as a natural outwork and of the defended royal island of Athelney at the end of the 9th century, which connects it with King Alfred. The, ch the church on top is dedicated to St Michael and built in the 13th century, so it's a very, very interesting place. Now this, they think, is a natural outcrop uh, that formed naturally in this area. It's quite an unusual one, it's similar to the tor, um, but then it was shaped and probably made to look like the tor, which was also shaped, I believe. And it was also known as St. Alfred's hideout or, or um, castle before um, it was a, there was a church built on it. And it's got links with King Alfred going way, way back, um, you know, over a thousand years. But it could be much older. It could be prehistoric settlement in this area. And also, if we look at it from the uh, perspective of the Glastonbury Zodiac, this is the nose of the great Gert Dog of Langport. The tail of the dog is Wag Drove, where <laughs> David and Susan live, where I used to live. And, um, but this is the nose and the mouth of the dog, and the nose is actually exactly uh, where it meets the River Farrot or Parrot. This is also where every year then, when they do wassailing, they throw apples into the river to feed the great Gert dog of Langport, and there's a very ancient tradition that says that. So this could mark part of the great Glastonbury Zodiac, the guardian dog, if you like, of the Zodiac, the Gert dog of Langport, which sits to the south, um, or sits more to the west, the southwest of the great Zodiac itself. More interestingly, it's also the third eye of the great Glastonbury unicorn, which overlays the dog, and the hind or the tail touches in Somerton with the paw of the lion. And some, that's interesting in itself, because that is the old royal town of Britain, or Wessex. And that's where the royal coat of arms was created, which has the lion and the unicorn on it. And we'll just show you uh, on the map exactly where that meets. And so we have the dog here, the nose of the dog, and the third eye of the great Glastonbury unicorn, which stretches about 10 to 12 miles wide. And the horn is the River Parrot, or the River Farrot, which heads up um, northwest from this particular spot.